Welcome back to my cave for another Balf's Games for Review, and I'm not even sure how to tackle this one. This game is called Chimera Land. It's a game I wanted to talk about, and it's a game I've been playing for the past few days, for about a week or so, and to be honest, I've actually been enjoying it, but can I really recommend this game? I mean... There are a lot of problems with this game, and I'd have to say this game is even harder to defend than Biomutant. But I'll do the best I can, I guess. Okay, so we're booting up the game. Da -da 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 da 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 Oh, that was quick. I'm actually kind of surprised at how quick the load times are in this game. This game is an online game, and it seems to be pretty bandwidth friendly. It has a big world, but surprisingly decent load times, which kind of surprising, especially after Biomutant's long-ass load times. First off, let's talk about everyone's favorite aspect of this game, mine included, the character creator. There are so so many options in this game, like you can really create your character. The fact that this game gives you so much freedom for your character, I want to see more of this. I want to see more of this in games. Maybe not to this level, I mean, sure, to this level, but not necessarily to this level, but just give me more freedom than just slapping cat ears and a tail on a human and calling it a day. If there is any game that gives me the paradox of choice, it's this game. That being said, while I do really like bears and wolves and bulls and so many of those other creatures, you know I'm a big fat megafauna guy. I gotta go with the megafauna. Though for some reason, regardless of whether you pick the rhino or the hippo, the game still calls them rhinos. They're called rhinos instead of megafauna because I'll just go with it. The character builder in this game is pretty advanced. You get to select all your dimensions, the hair color, a little bit of hairstyle choices, though not many. And the rhino in this game is actually quite cute looking, to be honest. But creating a proportionate character is not easy. Especially if you want your character to be fat or muscular. Like I typically would. And as much as I'd love to give this big chunky rhino the biggest belly possible, you can't really thicken his legs proportionately. So, do I give him the biggest belly possible or do I try to make him look proportionate? Sorry, but I like my fat furs proportionate. I, I don't like big, ungainly, protruding bellies like that. So, sorry. He's still kind of chonky, though. After you make your character, you get to select your continent. You can have different characters for different servers, but each server you play on, you're only allowed a single character. So, find a location you think looks cool. I, I'm particular to icy locations, to be honest, so I'm gonna go for somewhere in the ice region. And then, as it turns out, your character is a Frickin' meteor! So here they are, hurtling down to Earth, going wee as they find a place to land. <laughs> Look at that big chonker fly! And at the start of the game, it tells you how to move and whatnot. Don't get used to that. Many of the game functions you are going to have to learn on your own because the game doesn't make clear what all the functions are. They do make clear some of the functions, but not all of them. There are several different weapons in this game like bows, cannons, axes, swords, floating rapiers and whatnot. There's a lot of weapons to choose from, but... Admittedly, the combat's not that great. The enemies don't really respond that well to your attacks, and sometimes you can hit an enemy and it does nothing. I've noticed in old RPGs like Elder Scrolls Morrowind, that's a thing, but modern day RPGs? I don't know. Also, you befriend people by visiting their houses. 
For some reason, you can't just meet people and befriend them unless I'm doing something wrong. You have to know where their house is, and that's kind of annoying. Something they could really improve on. Also, it's really hard to actually click on anything in that tiny window, especially if you don't know how to activate the cursor, but it's the H key. That's how you activate the cursor. The main bulk of the game isn't just battling monsters, though, but also gathering resources. Resources that can be used to craft items, furniture, help build houses and whatnot. I like this about the game, actually. There's a lot of things to work towards. Plus, you can level up individual skills like gathering, mining, wood cutting, and whatnot. And when you reach a goal, it's actually quite rewarding. However, one thing that takes some getting used to is the fact that there are certain items that come from these gathering sources that are really hard to get if you don't have the right skill leveled up yet, but a lot of times I've noticed that I don't necessarily need that skill just yet. Like, when trying to gather palm leaves and coconuts, I, I find out that I don't really need those items right away, so I don't mind this too much. Speaking of homes, there's a lot of player homes littered about the world. You can go in, play with their trinkets like their cooking pots or even their game machines, and you can also clean the house if you want to. Not sure why you'd want to, I'm sure there's a bonus for it, but hey, a little common courtesy hurts no one. And as far as the diversity of character homes goes, you got some cool ones, but you also got a few lazy ones. This one that I'm looking at right now is actually pretty decent. Surprisingly, even little actions have their rewards. If you go into this section and click on any icon with an exclamation point on it, you can find what you've collected. Beaten a certain amount of enemies, collecting a certain amount of goods, crafting a certain item and whatnot, all of that can reward you with cowries, which is the game's generic currency. And like I said, your basic abilities like gathering, wood chopping, and whatnot can all be leveled up and you can learn different skills from doing so. Let's say you want a certain item to be easier to get or you want to increase your stats or whatnot. There you go. Back on the topic of home crafting, you can even craft your own home. I like this aspect. Being able to craft your own home is actually kind of cool, and I'm actually happy with the home I'm creating right now. However, the mechanics for doing so aren't exactly perfect. Once again, you kind of got to learn the controls, and the placement of pieces can be very finicky at times. In addition, remember when I said that each key switches between cursor mode and camera mode? For some reason, it is disabled in this mode. You cannot switch to cursor mode once it ends up in camera mode. And if you click on devices, it immediately goes into camera mode and you can't select anything. I have no idea how to do anything while in devices mode. Also, you can apparently paint your house, but once again, anytime I've accessed the spray paint menu, I go right into camera mode and can't do anything. This seems to be a flaw with the game, but I've seen people who have painted their houses white, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know how to paint my house. I'm sorry. I don't even know how to add wallpaper. All I know is that I really hope this is something that gets fixed in the future. Traveling about the land can be slow at first, but once you got a mount and a sailboat, it's not so bad, because... The sailboat can travel through water pretty quickly, and mounts can travel through land very quickly. But going underwater? Yeah, you know how people don't like underwater levels in games? This game shows why that usually is, unfortunately. And certain resources can only be found underwater. It's kind of pretty, though. And thankfully, going underwater, at least early on, isn't that risky. There aren't any enemies, and even if you run out of breaths, you only lose a little bit of life at a time. So, do what you can. 
I haven't noticed that many glitches with this game, but they do exist. Aside from sometimes not being able to hit an enemy, sometimes the enemies teleport. Like, how the heck did it do that? But like I said, the combat's not that good. I really do hope, if this game gets to go on in the future, that they improve the combat in this game. But to be fair, the combat's not really my favorite part about this game. I'm actually more interested in the resource management and house building aspect, which is actually decent once you figure out the controls and in spite of that one big flaw I mentioned, I do still enjoy making my house overall. I have to be honest, I thought my opinions on the actual game would be a bit more negative than they have been, but honestly, I can't help but think this game is overheated too. I know I said that about Biomune, but I honestly feel that even more with this game. Also, you can capture certain enemies and turn them into pets. Usually you only get temporary pets, but sometimes you get pet eggs which can be used to make permanent pets. I think it's kinda cool I guess, though I have to be honest, I hear the lore behind this game is kinda messed up. Like my rhino dude, uh, from what I've heard of how something like that came into existence in this universe, I kinda don't want to delve further. I hear it's pretty messed up. And to be honest, normally I wouldn't be able to ignore it, but I don't know, I just, maybe I just like playing as a rhino so much, and to be honest, it's still a rhino, it's not a human who transformed or anything, and I don't know, I have an easier time ignoring stuff like that, if I like the character I'm playing as. And hey, look at that, there's a fellow player. I don't see many of them, but every once in a while, I do run into other players in this game. This game doesn't seem that popular right now though, but I don't know, maybe by the end of this video, you might give it a try. You might like it, you might not, but I'm not done explaining the game yet, because one of the things I really like about this game is just how much there is to do in this game. You got your usuals when it comes to interacting with other players, emotes and whatnot, and here I am acting like a complete buffoon right now. Crafting is pretty simple and to the point. There's tons of different stations for building different items. It could be condensed a little bit, but eh, no, all the stations at least make sense for what they provide. Though some of the objects you need for certain items can be a little hard to obtain. Thankfully, this game has something really handy available. You need to find a certain item, a lot of those items can easily be tracked down with the resource finder, which points you to the three closest destinations of where you might find your items. And I think that is really useful. I'm actually kind of glad this game has something like this. It's not perfect though, I noticed that the indicators go away after a certain period of time, even when you're still trying to find stuff, which can be annoying, but as long as you have at least one of the item, you can always go into your inventory and look for the item again, or if it's for a certain recipe that you can access with the home menu or something, you can do that too. But still. And a lot of times when you work towards a goal, it can be pretty rewarding. Like, I thought this sailboat might be disappointing when reading the description, but I was wrong. It makes traveling across water much more convenient, and despite what the description says, does not rely on the wind. Also, look at this view. That's kind of pretty. Even with the game's graphics. It did take a lot of palm leaves to craft that, though. Somebody better get the Lorax out here! We need someone to speak for the trees! There's also a pretty extensive pet system, with many of the enemies being able to be turned into pets, as long as you can capture them and get their egg, or get temporary versions of them. 
But there are other event pets you can get, such as the little dinosaur beside me. But watch out, some trees have their guardians. Usually not too hard to dispatch, though. In general, though, I am just impressed by how much they crammed into this game. You can lie down on a bed and face solo bosses using this menu, although many of the ones you face early on are complete pushovers. And I do have to be honest, like I said, the, the combat in this game isn't great. It's pretty rough, but... I don't think it's egregiously bad, to the point where you can't enjoy it. But I do not believe it is this game's strongest point. There's also the arcade machine, which lets you brush up on your skills like fighting mobs of enemies, or capturing pets, or using the bow to shoot enemies down, and that's pretty neat. Honestly, I still have enjoyment in spite of the battle system, and that might just be because I'm more forgiving towards games with anthros and games that actually let me play as something cool and likable as opposed to, well, you know, I, I'd rather not go down that road. But still, may, maybe I'm just more forgiving given the circumstances, but I, I still like the game in spite of it not being all that polished. There's also tons of boss monsters you can fight in. I could probably make an entire video on the Groove Swine. This thing's about as rumply plumply as I could ask for. I also love how the boss monsters just ignore you at first until you do a substantial amount of damage. Like, you are beneath me, worm! You are not worth my attention! <laughs> I just look at this, he's almost enjoying it, really. But honestly, that's what I want out of a big fat guy like this. Oh, now you're gonna do something? Yeah, when they do decide that you are worth their attention, watch out, because you better be a substantial level in order to fight them. I'm not doing much. I'm not ready for this big plumster. But then again, do I want to beat this guy? I always imagine that big fat monsters like this are very full of themselves. Like, the thing is called the Groove Swine for crying out loud. Can you imagine this thing on the dance floor showing off its dance moves, swinging its big fat belly around, and maybe you have to dodge its belly to the beat of a music or something? I told you I could make a whole video about this thing. That being said, there is a lot the doves need to work on in this game, as far as polish goes, and as well as bug fixes. But I have to say, going into this video, I thought I'd be more critical about this game. Sure, there's a lot to criticize, but there's a lot I actually like about this game, and I genuinely enjoy this game in spite of its issues. The question is, would I recommend the game? Well, thankfully, the game is actually free for PC and mobile devices, so there's nothing to lose in at least trying the game. This is one of those games you kind of need to see to believe and maybe come to your own conclusion. Bear in mind that there is a steep learning curve to this game when it comes to learning all its functions, but... Ultimately, this might be a game where you need to download and come to your own conclusions on, but I'm just saying that I actually did enjoy this game in spite of its issues, and that's, that's my opinion personally. That being said, do I like this game just because you can play as an anthro? Is, is that it? Is that all it takes for me to find enjoyment? Well, no. There are anthro games out there that I genuinely don't enjoy, and I feel like maybe I should do videos on them. Games like Dusty Raging Fist, or maybe if I can get some uh, footage for the game. I am kind of tempted to do a video on Sonic Adventure, and I'm being honest, I don't think that game has aged very well, but... Eh. I do have to say that, yes, I am a little more forgiving to games that have anthropomorphic characters in them, but it's not a given that I will enjoy your game if it does. Like, you can look up my 
old, old review on Pariso Island, and that got a negative review in spite of it being Animal Crossing starring iguanas. So, no, it's not a given I will enjoy your game just because it has anthropomorphic animals in it, but it does help a little bit for me, just because, well, I don't want to get into it. But anyway, this is my review on Chimera Land. Try out the game yourself. Come to your own conclusion. I can't guarantee you'll like it, but who knows? If you're willing to give this game a chance, you might. And with that being said, I'm Balf, and the cave is closed.